wasn't always in the Klipsch speakers. Prior to 2018, I've never owned or heard a single Klipsch product, but have always been mesmerized by those gorgeous ceramic copper woofers. In this video, I'm going to walk you through my path to an accidental full house of Klipsch speakers. My home theater systems have always been a mishmash of brands, Frankenstein systems to be more accurate. Before building the current home theater in my new house, the previous system at the old house was in use for a solid 18 years with only a few changeouts along the way. It was a mix of Polk LS FX dipole speakers for the rear back channels, NHT Super Ones for the side surround, Definitive Technology UIWRLS2 in wall reference line speakers for the front left and right, and finally a Paradigm CC170 center channel speaker in the front. The old theater room was nothing special and sounded like ass most of the time. Looking back, as dumpy as it was, it was still a proper dedicated space separate from the common areas. The theater was in the basement with wood paneling all around and framed movie posters surrounding the space, making the acoustics a ricocheting array of bouncy sounds in a completely untreated room with zero acoustic control. A dismal echo chamber of torture. The wood paneling would slap and crack as it bowed under the stress of the tube subs I had built. See my channel on how to build your own. Alright, moving on. As I said, that was the old system, and I used that experience to fix all the things I didn't like about it for the next project. I'm going off topic for a moment with some backstory. To save money, my wife and I shacked up in a 300 square foot efficiency apartment for around 6 months after we sold the old house waiting for the new one to be built. I thought it would be nice to get some small powered bookshelf speakers to hook up to the TV while we hibernated in that hellhole. I think sound bars are an abomination on humanity and wanted something real I could use in any situation in the future. After some research, I kept seeing the Klipsch R15PM powered monitor bookshelf speakers getting rave reviews time and time again everywhere I looked. They were attractive speakers but a little pricey. I managed to get a set in black as refurbs off eBay and hook them up. They had all sorts of connectivity options plus a remote control. I was amazed at how they sounded. I won't get into the foo-foo of it all, but you can find dozens of reviews on them online. But these were pretty great, better than I expected. Bottom line, I was intrigued by these little speakers. The clarity and overall dimension of sound got me excited about speakers again. The stereo imaging alone was fantastic. Hearing every little detail at lower volumes was a treat too. These little speakers were the best part of living in this apartment. Later on, after the house is completed, these powered monitors will end up in a bedroom along with a second set in Cherry for another bedroom. So that's two sets of powered monitors now. I researched primary speakers some more. Hours upon hours and based on my available budget, I narrowed the search down to the SVS Ultras and the Klipsch RF73s. I looked at a lot of candidates and likely would have loved them all. I didn't want to spend more money on external amplifiers, but instead invested the cash in the RF7 Series 3 towers and matching RC64 Series 3 center channel. You can power these with excellent results on almost anything. This is nuts, but my declining mental state living in this horrible apartment made me think that the clips look like they'll sound good. You get it, right? In the new theater, I wanted really big sound and discovered the reference series RB81 Series 2 bookshelf speakers. I want these for the side and back channels. Learning my lessons from the previous theater, I had no desire to mix and match speaker brands ever again or be desperate enough to reuse the speakers I already had. I wanted new stuff, damn it. When I was able to test all these speakers, I was blown away by the sound. The RB81 Series 2 in particular sounds so big, they'll make your TV seem small. All these speakers so far have a very exciting and alive sound that makes them a joy to listen to. Not harsh or fatiguing at all. I just melt into the experience like a fine mozzarella on a bed of dough. Seems I've fallen down the Klipsch rabbit hole and have no choice but to stay on that path. I went with their largest in-ceiling speaker for the upper four channels of the theater system. The CDT5800C2 in-ceiling speaker answers the call. It's adjustable and again looks great while sounding remarkable. I built back boxes for these so they could do their job. I'll cover those in a future video. When I purchased the RB812 bookshelf speakers, I grabbed six of them 
with the intention to use two for the main front channels in the media room and four in the theater room. I also bought six of the CDT5800C2 in-ceiling speakers with the plans to use two in the media room ceiling and four in the theater room ceiling. Now that the 11 channel home theater is finalized, I still need to choose the side and back channel speakers for the nine channel media room. Since the media room is a smaller space and I don't want in-wall speakers, I thought something similar to the R15PM powered monitors might work. The next best thing is the reference Premier RP150M bookshelf speaker, and those are even better. For the media room, since I didn't need anything spectacular for gaming, I bought a cheap RC52 Series 2 center channel speaker, and it's awesome. I also got a free SW311 500 watt powered subwoofer with the purchase of four of the RB81 Series 2 bookshelf speakers. I used it for a little while in the living room, as you can see in the pic. It's pretty much useless since it's so small. I packed it up and put it back into storage. I still needed a subwoofer for the media room and noticed that the R112SW 12 inch subwoofer was on sale. I bought two of them and placed them in the front corners of the media room. They look snazzy as they match my RB81 Series 2 bookshelves and are more than adequate for the 1200 cubic foot room space. These subs are front ported and perform better than I expected. When we moved into the new house, it was close to two years that it took me to build the basement theater and media rooms. During that time, we had the Klipsch RF7 Series 3 front and center speakers set up in the living room. Once the theater was built, these had to go to their final resting place, leaving the living room without speakers. My wife insisted I replace them with another set. I said, what? No way, don't be silly. I have these great NHTs laying around. You'll love them. So here I go and replace the Klipsch Towers with the old NHT Super 1 bookshelf speakers I had saved from my previous theater. The NHTs didn't last more than a few days. I guess that puts an immediate end to the question, just how many speakers do you need? The answer is always more. Up comes another Klipsch, this time a pair of reference Premier RP280F. They look and sound just like the baby brothers of the RF73 towers. I also have a pair of R41SA surround speakers still in a box. They were supposed to go in the living room as front height channels, then later switch to rear surround channels. We have yet to decide on how to manage the wires since neither of us want to see cables hanging down the wall or running across the floor. Those will sit in a box for another day. As you can see from the illustration, my design plans for the living room have changed quite a bit. Additionally. We've even gone as far as to buy three of their Groove portable Bluetooth speakers. Let me just say they are okay. You can't see me, but I'm using air quotes. They do sound better than any of the Bluetooth speakers that we've ever had. However, I think we expected more considering their size and weight. Okay, look. I can't say with any certainty that I am not obsessed with Klipsch speakers. It feels like I am. But I don't mean to be. I do know that I'm extremely impressed with these speakers. Whenever someone comes to the house, it's hard to miss these speakers. They stand out and they never fail to spark a conversation. If you currently have as many or more Klipsch speakers, let me know in the comments. If you have another speaker brand that you have as much of, let me know that too. I've linked all the items mentioned in this video below. If you want to support me and want to see more videos on this channel, please use the links in the description. Thanks for hanging out with me.